a daughter needs a dad. Why does a daughter need a dad? Because a dad is going to teach his daughter what type of man to look for in their life. Or a male influence, yes, in a positive light. And right? what, what does a quality man look like? Right. Holding doors, respect, love, protection, the things you said, those get taught by a man. Social skills, the lack thereof. Mm -hmm. Right now, right now, there's a 75% divorce rate in America. 25% of people that get married stay married. The rest get divorced. And not even all, and not even 100% of the 25% is is functional marriages. No, they're, still, they're toxic. I got a lot of stats on this. I, you know, Sean works with couples. I'm studying this, and one in four black women get married. The other three don't. And the, the black community is the one that suffers the most divorces. Why one in four? Because I'll tell you, this is a story that society has taught modern women to be modern day women and not feminine women. There's a big shift that's happened, especially in the black community. In 1940, 80 percent of house black households were married. Now it's down to 25 oh. percent because the women are raised to be taught by their moms, not their grandmothers, not your great grandmother, your grandmother. And maybe not your mom. I'm not picking you no, out no, individually. Sure. Just generic comment here. Um, they have been taught that you don't need a man. Go out. Pull your dick out. Be a boss bitch. Don't be feminine. Be a feminist. And feminine, feminine, feminist, the traditional term of feminist was you have a choice. But it's been shifted to. This is the option. This is it. This is it. I'm, 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 I'm taking charge. I don't need a man. When in reality, they need a man. And so what happens is they, they get in the danger zone between 26 and 33. That's the danger zone, right? And they all want a high-valued man, but they don't want to be a traditional woman. They want a traditional man, but they, they don't want to be a traditional woman. They We're don't want to go back down this path. Right, but, but it, it, it comes full it's circle true. because do you have a cookbook? No, it, do you have a cookbook? No. Do you know how to cook? No. no. So wait a minute. You want the man to what? Provide, protect. I don't need a man to protect me. If a burglar breaks in a home, Who's going to go in front of you? You're going to go hands on with a burglar or is your husband? But right now, women have been taught that they don't need men. The, the, the birth rates are down in the world. Is that not the craziest thing to, to think? I mean, and, and, and it goes vice versa, too, because, like, even though, yes, both, both, gen, uh, both genders can, can make it very well. Well, but, but financially, a lot of people can't because they need two women. Sure, but, but my point is, to be taught that we don't need a woman or we don't need a man to actually have a, a just the whole Americanized picture of the American dream. Yeah. Family, white picket fence, <laughs> life, parenthood, and all that stuff. And like, just like you said, they're also being taught to be single moms and raise your children. Like, the thing is, like, <laughs> and I don't mean this, I don't mean this sounds sex sexist, it's not. A woman cannot raise a boy to be a man. It's physically impossible. It's emotionally, intellectually impossible. And what they're doing is they can't raise their their daughters properly right now. They're teaching them that they don't need to. Ha they're setting an example. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to go down this since we're on it. Because, number one, there are certain qualified things about a, about a man that a boy needs to learn from a man. Because a woman doesn't know. Uh, they, they can't pretend to know either, but they don't know because it's, it's not them, right? So you can't teach... <clears throat> You can't teach somebody, again, we always talk about practicing what you preach. You can't teach someone something that you've never been or done, right? Just like how I talk about therapists that have never been drug addicts teaching, you know, how to, you know, give education to a drug addict. But without going down, down a different tangent, um, you know, but the same thing is with daughters, a daughter needs a dad. Why does a daughter need a dad? Because a dad is going to teach his daughter what type of man to look for in their life. Or a male influence, yes, in a positive light. And right? what, what does a quality man look like? Right. Holding mm -hmm. doors, respect, love, protection, the things you said, those get taught by a man, by a father. Um, or if, and, and if you can't get that, then at least get them in front of someone that can be some sort of a role model, not if it's necessarily somebody that's, that you're dating, but that's some sort of mentorship that can teach and educate son or daughter 
what a real man is like. What's it like to be around a real man? You know, because a man's got to teach, a, a dad's going to teach his daughter going from princess to queen. Right. And, and, and a single mom is not necessarily going to be able to teach a daughter how to be a queen, and, and, a real queen, not a right, right. But are they bossy. teaching? Are they teaching their their daughters how to be a good wife? This is where the line gets drawn in the sand. My my girlfriend is teaching my daughter how to cook. She wants a husband one day. Are you going to cook for you? I ain't cooking for no man. I don't cook. I don't clean. Well, that's why you're single. That's why most women in the late 30s and early 40s are single and grumpy and all men are, are, are douchebags and they're all cheaters. When, 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 and, and if you, the poll that's been done in relationships, 28% of the men have admitted to cheating, 25% of the women have admitted to cheating. So it's about even. But when the divorces happen, 80% of the divorces, it's the woman filing for a divorce, leaving the house because she thinks she can do better. And so what happens is now I don't need the man. And now you're, now you're out there trying to go find another high value man. When you had somebody that was responsible to take care of the kids and he's trying to take care of you, but you wanted to challenge him on everything. But, but you know what society has even created in the last 10 years, maybe more, but really more than 10 years, um, is if you get into a fight or an argument, divorce. Yeah, they're piece of shit. Go to counseling. Even, and it's not a qualified person, but do something. But even, I don't get along. But even if you don't, like, look, relationships are going to have their bad times. There's going to be times right. where they're going to be. There's going to be disagreements. There's going to be times where you're going to fight. There's going to be times where it's going to get so fucking heated where you're just like, I can't take it anymore. But not literally go fucking divorce because of a couple arguments that you have, or let's go down the path of honor, or because. Husband and wife get into a fight and then wife or husband goes talk shit about their partner to their friend because you got into a heated battle. That's not honor. Like you got to honor your partner. If you need to go vent because maybe you want some advice, maybe I fucked up somewhere, one thing. But because if we got into an argument, I'm going to go to George and fucking talk shit about Daverick. And Daverick's such a piece of shit because we got in a fight and he doesn't agree with me. I mean, that's, that's absurd also. Feelings. And that's happening, that's happening all the time. Right. And then... You got the motherfucker George that's single saying, dude, fuck her, get the fuck out, walk away. And, and this is the other misconception. I agree with you. This whole fairy tale idea that you're supposed to be happy in a marriage, it doesn't mean you're supposed to be happy. You have a responsibility. You have children. It's a job. It's work. I want to be happy. I want to be this princess. Well, who sold you that bill of goods? It's a job. If you get into disagreement, and the other thing is, why are you bickering? It's not my job to make you happy, and it's not your job to make me happy. 100%. And why are you fighting? Why are you, why are you challenging your husband? Why aren't you letting him lead? What's going on? Why are the, now, I'm not saying it's all the women, but what, what is he doing, right? But at the same time, there's a lot of these problems because there's this bullish mindset attitude that I ain't going to let no man tell me what to do. Okay, well. It, and there are some men that have actually lost their masculinity to that, and they fold to their women and that is it be, exactly and here's the other thing women choose who they have sex with men choose who they marry and who they have a relationship with it's that's up to the man but the woman is the one that controls the sex right and so you see this going on and what happens with these guys that weren't raised as men they're like taking anything they're on standby you see them they're in the gym they're around they're just waiting for us to fall they're sniffing around <laughs> is he still is he still with iris is he still with iris soon as they think i'm not the the dms come in because they're on standby and a beta male is the most dangerous person in the world for men and, and, and the old, old days... More back, dangerous than, 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 a, fe, than a feminist. You, you're right, because in the old world, they would have took him out to the jungle or the woods and killed him. Oh, I saw so-and-so. Why are you telling so-and-so about my business and where I'm at and who I'm with and what I'm doing? Because you want to get in my girl's pants? Dude, if, you, if this was 100 years ago, you'd be dead. Yeah, you'd be out of here. But again, tr this goes back to traditional values. Like, just out of raw respect... I was just talking about somebody because, um, it, it, like, and I already knew this about you, but it was just even greater to see. Yeah, because, like, you know, you, you wanted to send a referral to my girlfriend and, but with, with the business that she's in. And so you messaged both of us in a group message just as respect to me as your friend 
and you reaching out to my girl, not that you need to, because I know you and I trust you, obviously, but nonetheless, just the fact that the high level, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that high level of mutual respect is there that, hey, this message is for Stacy, um, but Sean, you're keeping you in the thread so that you know. And then you, said, you mentioned to her that like, hey, I got a referral for you. My friend's wife wants to check out the recovery center, et cetera, et cetera. And like, what was my response? Love you, bro. Respect. Yeah. Like that just doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't. You know, honor, loyalty, respect, integrity, like, like it doesn't. And that to me, and I was on a phone call when you sent that, um, and I was just kind of going through somewhat of similar things that we're talking about right now with this person. I said, let me give you an example. Cause my friend just sent this to me and I literally read the message and they're like, wow. And I was like, yeah, wow. And I'm like, you know what? I was like, me and Davrick actually talk about this stuff on a regular basis yep. because people of high value talk about their values pretty often and, because we stay aligned. And, and it's, it, I treat it like this. You're like a brother. Okay. I don't have a close relationship with your girl. I, don't, I, I keep a distance, but I know she's a nice person. We talk, but I treat her as if she was a sister. Like I would never cross the line. I respect who I'm with. And even if you say you're fine with it, I never, ever want to give you one second of doubt to doubt me because you know when that doubt's gone that doubt comes out the glimmer of hope you're like i can never trust that dude again right so if i step over the line and do something i say you know i don't need to do this but i choose to do it but it's the right thing to do and that's why my response was i love you bro respect because that's 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 exactly what it's about that's that's what traditional values is you go back to like mafia days or like emperor empire days like Everything that had to do with a man reaching out to a woman, the man reaches out to the man first. Yeah. Hey, <coughs> got to talk to your chick. I, I had a guy that happened the other day. The guy reached out to me, kept reaching out to me. I said, you know, because they want, they want uh, Iris to do some promotional stuff for Vegas on a billboard. And I said, bro, you can hear. He said, no, no, I'm just, just respect. I said, no, it's good. I, you're a good dude. Go ahead and reach out to her directly. You have my permission. Basically is the way I, I messaged it, right? Whether she wants to do it or not, but he's like, no, I just want to check with you. And I said, it's totally cool. It's fine. So they're doing some marketing advertising. And they wanted to use her, and, and he came and to me. That just, now, he could have went to her, but he came to me first. I said, oh, I respect that. And because he did that, I even have more trust with him. Right. And it's just, it's one of those things that doesn't exist in this world anymore. Some point in time, it got lost. And I think it got lost because of this mixture of what's happening within schools within relationships and what's been being taught to go be your own person. You don't need a man. Your man doesn't need a woman. Like just, you know, we've gotten so far away soft from what real life is actually supposed to be like that actually generated love, health. Look, there's a reason why there's a reason why relationships, marriages from like 80 years ago are still in marriages, but then marriages from like 20 years ago are not in marriages. There's a reason why. Yeah. It's because of those traditional values have never left the older, well, the, men, the older men, generation. Men have never changed. We're not the ones changing. We, we're still the same. The, 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 the high value men, we're still the same. It's the women that have changed. And here's the other thing. Why can't a woman, why, why, do, why is it okay for women to talk shit about men and say, oh, they're, you know, men are cheaters, they're scumbags. You don't need men. But if men say that. We're the devil. We're the devil. We're the outcast. You see what I mean? And, and, and I told this gal the other day, she's like, I'm, I'm dating, blah, 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 this and that. And I said, well, what, what is a man looking for? She goes, I don't know. I said, well, what, do you think it's what you, you're what he's looking for? And I said, first thing you need to do is lose all your single friends. Okay? Because you spend most of your time with single friends, your single girlfriends. And what are they telling you? Men suck. Don't trust a man. Exactly. It's all, it's all, it's pouring in exactly. this negative shit. You actually nailed it is, is couples, whether it's, whether it's the husband or the wife having, hanging out with friends that are single. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some singles that are, that it's still like <coughs> they, they, they got that person's back and they're for their relationship and they're like hey, much love and respect. But the, but majority are there bitching and complaining about how women suck or about how men suck. And then, but when you know what else they do? 
they'll pry for something shitty that happened in the marriage. Where like, so like if I was a shitty dude and I was single, dad, like I'd be prying, hey, what happened with you and hired? You, got, you and I must have had some fights. And then as soon as you feed me one little nugget, I'm like, bro, you gotta leave, walk away. Like that's what's happening today. And, and a birds of a feather flock together, right? So if, you're, if, you, if you have, uh, ladies leave your single friends, if you're in a relationship as a woman or a man, and you're hanging around a bunch of people that are single that are telling you the opposite, it's going to affect your relationship. And it's going to be toxic and it's going to be cancerous. It's going to bleed in your relationship, in your partner, and you're going to cause infighting. And then they're going to go, see, I told you, I told you, I told you. But there's a reason why and you're... They get, and they get turned. And there's a, right. And there's a reason why your, your, your single lady friends are single. Right. It, okay. <laughs> How are we doing? Daverick, let's go hang out at the bar. And I tell my guy friends this. You're the only man on this fucking planet that is the same way I am when it comes to this. And maybe a few others. Hey, man, I'm in Vegas. Let's have a drink. Well, I got to check with my girl. Well, she's busy. You know, let's, let's meet up. No, I don't. Uh, no. I don't. If I go to a, the danger zone, a bar, a, a bar. Your partner's coming. She's coming. She is coming. Yeah, I don't want her to ever have to second guess anything. Because I don't need some dude in here running around going back to her saying, I saw Dab. And the waitress talked to him. She sat down next to him. You beta fucking man. But, but besides that, too, I mean, look, the, you just said it. It, it. On either end, the husband or the wife, boyfriend or girlfriend, your partner is much more, whether they admit to it or not. I don't give a fuck if they never admit to it. But the truth is, your partner is more comfortable knowing that you're going out with girlfriends or your boy or boys that are actually in relationships because you know it's going to be a clean quality you guys get boys talk to them sit do your thing but no weird shit's going to take place right whether it's the female or the male and, and watch this you're out of town your other half calls me and, and iris and says hey can i help you guys sean has gone mm. i would probably say no out of respect just because I, I don't feel comfortable without you there. Not that anything weird would happen. No. But it's like, why the fuck are you meeting them out at a lounge? What's going on? Right? It, it's not going to happen, brother. It's not going to happen. Now, if you were missing, nobody could find you. Stays so like, Dav. Yeah, I, different story. Okay, let's get together. Let's strategize. Call the police. Whatever. But hey, he's been gone for a week. I'm kind of bored. Hey, can we all hang out? Yeah, we're busy. We're busy. Or if something happened in your relationship. This is another one. If you, God forbid, I hope it doesn't, but let's say you, you guys weren't together anymore. And she said, hey, can I hang out with you guys now? Why? Because I was friends with Sean before you. And I, I respect who I was friends with. No pun intended, you're a nice woman, but I can't hang out with you. That's disrespecting Sean. You know, nobody, it doesn't exist anymore in these days. I don't care how pretty she is. I don't care how single I am. I don't care what the situation is. Babe, no. Don't. Hey, Stacy, no. Why? You're, you're not old enough to realize it. I'll explain it to you. It's a long conversation. It's a long conversation. And you may not understand it, but if I'm leading, you got to listen. Yeah. It's not again, on my watch. It's traditional values. So you, know what, you know what this reminds me of? The, the, the guys like us, you ever see those posters of those, the, the, the lion, the old one that has all the scars beating up, his hair is frayed, he looks like he's been in battles, and you see the three other lions hanging around the fringes yeah. trying to wait, and they're always challenging me, still whooping their ass? Our day, we're not dead, our day is still alive. Yeah. And we're going to fight to the end, right? Yeah. And we're those guys, and then you see that lion where all the hyenas come after him, have you seen that? Yeah. And then other lions come in and beat the shit out of the hyenas and save them? There's only so many true, high-valued, elite alpha males that understand traditional values and where their role is and what they should do. And they're gonna, I'm going to die on my sword before I sell out and become a beta. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It isn't going to happen. Yeah. Or, or, sell out, or sell out my loyalty. No. Because, like, you know, one of the things that I've always prided myself in that I'll take to my grave, people can try to talk shit about me all day long, um, but... They'll never be able to talk shit about my character. They might say he's an asshole. They might say he's too direct, too straight. You'll never be able to f fuck my character. No one will ever be. No one. No one can ever question my loyalty. No one can ever question my integrity, my honor, my respect, my love and protection for not just my my loved ones, but my but my friends too. Like that's and that's something I've prided myself because I've never folded and I will never fold because 
because it's such a rarity in today's in today's day and age that we need to be more we need to be louder about it right and pass along the torch because yeah. the the generations behind i mean you you know you you're you're ahead of me so the generations behind me like they need to be taught this stuff because no one's teaching this shit this stuff hasn't been taught in school and like i don't know george correct me if i'm wrong but do you believe that values traditional values of honor respect loyalty love what what being in a proper relationship is should be taught in school yes Yes, 100%. I think it gets taught uh, a lot more so by coaches. And I was thinking about this while you guys were talking. Uh, where did I learn a lot of my values from other than my father who, was, who did an amazing job of raising me? And he, uh, he even had his own mishaps, which I would say made me have to be the father. So like, I had to not only like learn from him on the fly, but I was enacting it. That mixed in with... I think football coaches and all the people that are at a school, like there's those mentors that can show young men how to treat women. And, you know, like I, I'm going to be honest, I call my students out on their simp shit all the time. And when they're being betas and like, I love that. I, no, simp like shit on that simp shit, I said, get out of here with that simp shit. Bro. Well, your shirt like, just says that. Get out of here with that simp shit. Get out of here with you that wear simp a shirt. shirt He's got to wear that I'm going to wear that shirt. I'll wear it. <laughs> no, but I think um, if it, comes in weird ways i feel if you don't have a dad or if it's not taught in school you learn it from movies and if you're not learning it from movies and then you're learning it from your friends i think that's where the disconnect happens because you start listening to your friends right your single friends that are just shitting on all the the relationships that you see around them unhealthy kind of stuff man. oh yeah so i think uh it's they're always available in school there's a lot more networking opportunities to find mentors that can teach you those things out of school there there's this there's this other notion w when it comes to equality and fairness there's nothing fair in this world and and equality doesn't exist Men, who built this world who and now this is going to go down real watch this the, the, right now i'm dealing with this in, in the tech space right it's called uh pay equality and all these women are complaining about pay. But when you look at the degrees they get versus the men, men get math, science, engineering. Women are getting communication degrees. What the fuck are you going to do with that? In tech world. Right. And then all these engineers, software engineers, and there's a lot of them say, well, we're, we're not making as much as men. Well, you're taking these fucking degrees that don't do shit. You're, you're taking, not coming in qualified. You're not coming in qualified. And then they're like, oh, we're just as, you're just as good as men. Who builds buildings? Who men. builds the infrastructure? Men. Who builds the homes? And they're trying to strip men of integrity. Yeah, the, con the construction and the labor work is being done by the men. There's, there is some women that do it. Sure. The majority. And you majority. know what? Women are like, nah, I don't want to do that. I got my communications degree, so I'm going to go be a social worker. Okay. Uh, that's, okay, that's what you want to do. Now watch this. I don't make as much as men. You got a software engineering degree. No. And here's the thing. Statistically, it's been proven that women in the same careers make... They're doing the same job. Most of them, there's a percentage higher of higher earners income. Oh, yeah. But what happens is women get out of college, start, start a job, then they get pregnant, get married, and they, they're a homemaker for a minute. Then they want to go back to work. So they're behind. But that same woman that stays in the career vertical, she's making more than men. And so this whole notion of equal pay, it's, it's total bullshit. It's bullshit because they're leaving out the qualified skills. Right. Because if, you, because if, you're, if your qualified skills is equal to the man, then yeah, fucking get all the pay you deserve. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, these stats I'm seeing, I'm a recruiter, 25 years. And every time on LinkedIn, I see the same thing. Equal pay for women, equal pay. What the fuck are you talking about? 25 years, I've never seen an unequal pay in my life. Not once. Well, there's no women in software engineering because they don't want to fucking get a software engineering degree. There's, I mean, look, they don't want computer look, science degree. You want to talk about that? Let's uh, let's look at real estate. You got a fair share of male and female realtors, where females have the exact same opportunity to go sell homes and make more money than any male on the planet. It, the equality is there. You, the qualified skills has to be there to match what you're asking for. And my realtor, Mary Perry, is one of the tops producers her her uh her real estate firm is they win awards she's the chairman of the real estate industry and they're killing it and she's killing it she's a woman
from Brooklyn. Jewish woman from Brooklyn. She's killing got, it. So she's, she's got the qualified skills. <laughs> she's got the qualified personality for Oh, it yeah. She's like, hey, I really want this house. Dabrick, listen to me. You're going to buy a house here. I was oh, okay. You're going to make 41% uh, appreciation. Okay. And I did it. And I did it. But you, to your point. So now go back to college. Ready for this? Another one. Another stat in the black community. Black community is hit the hardest right now with the, the black women's mindset. Now watch this. In college. When, when kids get into college, right, the first two years, they're like, hey, we're in college, we're, we're great, whatever. They get in these relationships. When, when white girls get out of college, a lot of them have a relationship and they go on to get married, do their career, whatever. Black women end up being single their junior, senior year. They're like, I don't know, I'm going to go be a boss bitch. It's killing the mindset, it's killing that community. I don't want us to stay on one race, but if you look at the way college is going Gender. now, right. It's, it's dying. Men, are, they're trying to kill us and chop us off at the knees. And I'm not going to let it happen. And anyone that wants to come on here, not this show, maybe a different show, a woman wants to challenge, you know, equality, all this stuff. Same reason, you know, again, I, I only got a little time and I'm, 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 I'm stepping over the line on everything here. I'm just going to go for it. Uh, you know, these transgender uh, males in women's sports. Well, wait, I thought you said we were equal. I don't agree with it. But now you're bitching about it because they're men and they're winning. They shouldn't be there, for one thing. But you were all, all high almighty when you wanted to be in men's sports to say, go ahead. I'm not agreeing with putting transgender people in no, women's that has, sports. That has no place. You're, just, you're, just talking, you're talking about uh, principle. Principle. The principle is men are stronger. We have testosterone. We've built the infrastructure. We're leading, just like in the animal kingdom. There's nothing wrong with that. But society has taught the women that it's not good. That it's toxic. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going down that path. Right. <laughs> so this is where we're at, Sean. In, in modern day, m modern women in this day and age are suffering and the men are suffering because they all want one thing. They all want the 1%. And, and <sighs> what does it all boil down to? There's Traditional values are gone. There's 348 million people uh, in, in the United States of America, right? There's more women than men. Yet every woman out is there. Is there really? Yes. Oh, shit. There's more women. There's a percentage. It's small, but there is. Now watch this. If you line up 10 women in this room and you say, what do you want in a relationship? What are you looking for a man? I want a man that makes six figures. Well, first of all, 15% of men in America make six figures. So now you got to fight with the other, you know, 100 and, and, and what, 40 million people? Women? Are you looking up the stats? Yeah. I'm listening though. Keep going. So you take half of 340 million. I don't even know the numbers, right? Okay, so 150, so it's more than that. I take that back. So 180. So you have 180 million, 170 million uh, women looking for the 1% man in America. How is that going to work mathematically? You're a math guy, right? So if you're a math guy, mathematically, how is that going to equate? It's not going to equate. It's 97 men to 100 women. There you go. I so told one you. to three. One to three. Holy Whoa. shit. So, so, so that's my point. 340 million. So what is it? 160, 160 million women. And they all want the one percenter. And here's the thing. The men choose the relationship. They choose the marriage. Yeah. You, you're the one that decides if we have sex. So you're all fighting for us. And you're sitting there telling us, I ain't going to take no man. But first of all, you're not even qualified. We're going to decide a high value man that makes six figures is what the definition is. But there's more to it than that. Sure. They're going to decide who they're going to be with because we don't need to deal with that. Yeah. Cause a high value man doesn't want that type of personality. It's not cause like, cause that personality up front just tells you that there's going to be a significant level of disrespect down the line. And then they go, well, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I want to work too. Okay. You want to work too? Let's talk about that. Who do you want to be responsible for the bills? You, the man. So you want him to be the provider, the protector and the cook. Exactly. So this is the problem we're having. And so to, and then the parenting skills also. Right. Like who's the parent? And then and then what happens? Your modern day marriages, women are like, Well, if I stay home and I don't work and I'm a homemaker, you know, what if he leaves? You're first of all, in a divorce the man always loses most of the time. He loses the house, he loses half the income, he has to go find somewhere to yeah, live. And no, what if he leaves? <laughs> The women are the ones leaving, 75%. Yeah, and the thing, <laughs> yeah. So now she has the house, the kids, the spousal support, the child support. He's out living in a one-bedroom apartment, barely surviving. Half his income's gone. 
And here's the thing. Hold on a second. So, so but, you're, when you say you're a homemaker, you don't want to be a homemaker because you want uh, – uh, what if – But let's – re- hold on a second. No, we're <laughs> rewinding. We're rewinding because, like, let's back up. No disrespect to you. But no. that, that whole my mentality of, like, but what if he leaves? Well, <coughs> even if that was true, even though most of the times the woman that leaves not the man, even if he leaves – so you already know you're going to do something that's going to make the man want to leave? Bingo. You're looking for a backup because all you're looking about is yourself. And you're fu- you, you know, you're, you're admitting to knowing you're going to fuck up you, as opposed to where I, what I, I preach all the time, consistent progression. No stagnancy, no regression. Pro, uh, progression on personal growth, development, how to be a better man, how to be a better woman, like evolve as a couple. Then why would a no no quality man is going to walk away from a relationship if the woman is of, is of equal quality when it comes to value of what they bring to the household? It's not going to happen. And love and it's respect. Not no gonna man's going to walk away. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Guys don't. Guys, that's, guys that, are simple. Food, fun, and sex. That's, that's why again. And football again. Rewind back into like way older, like 70, 80 year old couple, ninety year old couples that have been married for seventy years. They're still together today because, because the woman respected her man. The man respected the woman. They had some riffraff throughout the throughout their ages, but the love and respect and honor never diminished. That's because in the nineteen forty, when the feminist movement came out. It changed everything before that. How do you know that date? Because that came out in an article. It was about the feminist oh, movement was it? that was okay, written in an it. article, right, in a magazine. And then it was about choice, freedom of choice. Now women, feminists are, are preaching and screaming equality. There's no equality. You're not equal. But you think you're equal, and you're not. It's okay. But the problem is, is when I say that, it burns in the ears of modern day women that are pissed right now watching this podcast or listening to the, the podcast. It does not equate because no, my mom told me I can be I can run things. I'm I don't need a man. Well, that's why you're single. Because you want look, would you take a fifty uh, would you, would you take a plumber or a guy that works at Lowe's, a guy that makes forty eight, fifty thousand no. dollars a year? Why not? He could be a great guy for marriage. Why don't you do that? But you want a, a, a high value guy. Guess what? I, hear, I talked to the gal. She's 40 years old, has three kids. And she, I said, how do you rate yourself? She goes, what do you mean? I said, but look, how do you rate yourself? I, I'm, I'm an eight or 10. I said, okay. Eight Be- or 10. Beyonce's an eight or 10, right? I, by the stats. Sure. So you want a high valued man and you want a guy that's a, a high valued man that's going to take on three kids as a father figure and he's going to take you in and you're telling me that you're not going to let a man lead and and no pun intended ma'am you're not an eight you're a four or five you're overweight you're out of shape you have a negative mindset negative attitude and you, and you haven't said one thing about what a man wants in a woman it's all about what you want mm-hmm. are you well, with me yep and no disrespect but if you're looking for a high value man, you you're not you're not your twenties, you're not your late twenties. See, in the old days, when women got out of college, they got married 21, 22, 23. They were married. Now they're off in the career world. You know, it's so funny. I just have to mention this that we're talking about this. Like, I it makes me think about some of my girlfriends' girlfriends that that like really go off the bandwagon about their partners. And in my mind, like when she tells me about it, I'm thinking to myself like. A fucking wonder the dude doesn't want to be around it. No, because 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 mi- just just that al- like, again what I said just that alone. There's obviously a lack of understanding of what's going on, so you're gonna go to your girlfriend and fucking talk shit about your man. And here's the thing, men, it's about peace and war. We like peace. Men yeah, because like, we gotta go to war. In we the, gotta go to war as it is. That's what come on. What are you doing? Uh, stop. Give me a minute. Let me digress. Right. And so we don't want to be combative. Babe, uh, we're going to do this. No, I don't want to do this. Well, come on. Let's just, well, I don't want to do this. It's like, oh, my God. Why am I dealing with this? So you and I don't have to deal with it. Because you know what we'll do next? We choose. Men choose the relationship. You, might, you may not like the guy, but, but if I'm a high-value man, I don't need to, I don't care how, well, I'm good looking. I don't care. Next, because cool. guess Go what? Go find the asshole then. There's a hundred and with the dickhead. There's 160 million women looking for high-valued men, and only 15 percent 
of the men. Right. So I'm when they not, try to say I'm good looking, it's like, fine, go get the fucking dick face that's going to use you, not respect you, not love you. Right. And then, and then when the next attractive thing walks by, they're going to be in and bed so with you, that. And so you see this in Vegas, right? You see all these fitness girls, ones that are single running around here, right? And they're in their, they're in their, their shit like their shit don't stink. And they're in the danger zone because they're in there 28, 29, 30. And then they want to have kids and get married. But wait a minute. Your attitude's wrong. I'm hot shit. You're hot shit. Our looks don't last. What else do you bring to the table? What value do you bring? Oh, I don't know how to cook. Well, then you got a long road, sister. Well, because I'm not cooking for my man. So you don't want to do nothing for the man. It's all about you. It's all about what you want. Because your grandmother didn't raise you. Your mom did. And chances are our moms, very few of us, but some, most of them have been divorced. You know what's funny that you said that? Because I, heard, I, I don't remember where I saw this. Um, it, I saw. I can't remember where I saw it. I wish I did because I would definitely have George play it at the end of this at the end of this episode, um, where a woman who's a grandmother is actually telling her granddaughter about why men are great. That's a woman. That's why a, you need a man. And that's femininity. Do not go into life thinking that you're a woman and you got you, you can figure the whole thing out by yourself. That's femininity right there. That's a woman. And that's hard for any modern day woman to, to, to conceive. So I know we're running out of time. We, 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 we got a topic, man. We can talk about this. We, we're going to have guests on the show, Sean, literally, and, and a non combative way to talk about people that have relationship challenges. And they'll say, how do you guys know? You're a relationship coach. I'm older. I've been in relationship. I've been married, right? We've been around it, but we have the skill set, the mindset. We have the people skills. We deal with both genders on the daily. Yeah. And we're corporate guys. <clears throat> Come on the show. We'll talk about it. Not to make you feel bad, but why are you in a situation you're in? Maybe you're having a problem in your relationship, marriage. Maybe you're single and you're looking for Mr. Right or Mrs. Right. But there's things that you need to realize what a man wants in a woman if you're a woman. Not what you want, what he wants. Right. Are you with me? Yeah, it's got to be um, reciprocal. Boom. So... Uh, I hope you guys liked that episode. It was obviously a massive transition from <laughs> from school and education system to what's being taught to relationships, which somehow in multiple different episodes, we've kind of circled back to certain things in relationships. But um, obviously, as as the three of us in this room, as day, days go by and as we have more experiences in life, um, we see more and more of the things that are deteriorating and diminishing within relationships. And so it just naturally becomes a topic. Um, but there's value in that. So um, with that being said, if you guys do find value in our episodes or find it funny, um, please share it. I don't know if it's going to be funny. <laughs> share it, hit the pounds, hit the like button, and turn on the notification indicator. Subscribe. Subscribe and share the video. We're trying to build the channel. It's starting to grow. We're getting feedback. We're getting people messaging us on our IGs. Follow us on our IGs. And if you have any topics or questions. Send it want, to us, please. Yeah. Definitely like to talk to you. Right on. Thank you, George, for being there. George, you're the man. All right, dude, that was good. Hey, guys, thanks for watching the channel. If you like what you saw today, find value in what you saw, please share with your friends and family. And make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, and in the comment section below, let us know which topics you would like us to cover in the future.